Yeah, as you also mentioned in your article, the crisis of painting, you talk about this element of time there, and you say that because they were, uh, in a way, I mean, they were obsessed with imitating realism and and also with chronology, whereas yeah. whereas the Indian artists were not. It also comes from the fact the way this civilization also perceives time, looks at time, the cyclical yeah. nature yeah. of time. How does it reflect uh, in 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 the larger scheme of things? Yeah, uh, actually. Uh, the Western civilization has a linear, that we all know, has mm. a uh, linear sense of time. Mm. That time shoots like an arrow from past to future. Mm. And uh, it never turns back, it never loops, it is just goes on and on and on in forward direction. Mm. So that is why they are always obsessed with chronology. Mm. Uh, and this, uh, by when I see, uh, say West, I do not mean all West, I do not mean the pagan West, I mean specifically the Western civilization which was created by the Judeo Christian, informed by the Judeo Christian prophetic monotheistic culture. Mm -hmm. Because the Greeks were pagans, they had a lot of strains going on in them, mm -hmm. and a lot of them were similar to us. But uh, when I say the West, uh, this is what I say, uh, mean. So they have a very linear sense of time. So suppose in a Western painting, in a Renaissance painting, you will always be shown a single moment, a single strand of time mm. in the lifetime of any um, any historical or mythological personality. So suppose uh, in resurrection, there are hundreds of resurrection Renaissance paintings. So you will see Christ risen when in crucifixion you will see him crucified uh, on the cross. And in various such paintings, whether portraits or whether other uh, paintings, you will see one strand of time. It is. It will just be like somebody had put a camera mm. and uh, captured uh, a moment of time, uh, which is which is the definition of photography. There is no element of time in photography. While in videography, there is an el element of time. Uh, there is an arrow, but there is an element of time. In photography, there is no element of time. So in Western uh, painting, there is no element of time. However, in Indian painting, in various uh, Pahadi paintings, uh, in various uh, uh, Rajasthani paintings, what you will find is that there is a very famous uh, Rajasthani painting. Uh, I can uh, give later uh, the particular painting. Mm. There is a scene where Nal Damyanti episode is being told. Mm. So Nal, Nal has been uh, given a boon by the gods of becoming invisible to uh, visit Damianti without getting detected by anyone else in her palace. So uh, he, the artist with great, great uh, technical expertise too, he shows Nal in almost just the outline he is shown as invisible because how to show the invisible? Mm. So just a very slight outline, Nal enters, but that's not the only thing that is going on. At the same time, you can see that Nal is also inside in a bedroom with Damianti. Uh, what happened before Nal entered are also seen in, uh, depicted in various frames all across the painting. Mm. So there are actually not just one stand of time, but the entire story, mm. various moments of time are depicted inside a single painting, something which is unprecedented in the Western tradition. And this is not a single painting. There is another painting in which a king is going on a hunt. Mm. So uh, at first it looks like uh, there are 13 uh, lions, mm. uh, 13 tigers. Mm. Uh, some are alive, some are dead. But then you realize that they are not 13 tigers. It is the same tiger shown in 13 frames that uh, he is ready to pounce upon the bull who is uh, there as a bait. Mm. And that the bull is also shown in two or three uh, parts. In one, it is alive, and then just besides it, it is uh, killed, dead, and where his body parts are strewn all over. And then the uh, at first the lion is shown is uh, ready to pounce. Then again he is pounced. Then the king has uh, shot an arrow. Then he is inflicted with an arrow, and then he in the moments of agony, pain, and the various uh, moments in that entire scene they are shown. So there are actually actually 13 or 14, the entire story is shown within a single painting. This is something which the Western artist cannot comprehend. Mm. Because for us, once again, meaning becomes more important rather than technical perfection. Uh, the Western crit uh, critics are often say that uh, the Indian artist does not have a sense of chronology. It is not uh, like that he does not have a sense of chronology. 
but the western sense of chronology is only one set of chronology only one sense of chronology among many others and the indian artist he uses that uh, arrow of time whenever he wants to <laughs> whenever he wants to show uh, just a one strand of time but he can also but he can also transcend it and show uh, uh, time in circular mode in chrono, uh, in different chronology so the western sense of chronology is only one sense of chronology uh, the indian sense of chronology uh, ha- indian artist has many sense of chronologies to pick from so it it was not that he did not have any idea of the western sense of chronology he could pick from many according to his uh, uh, his need and this is uh, this is seen in our scriptures too this is not just in art because the scriptures are even more primary so in mahabharat you see in, in various other scriptures you see that uh, the same story is being told by very different person mm. so in mahabharat for example mahabharat is being told by vashampain the shish of uh, vedivyasa it is being told by vedivyasa himself it is being told by sanjay mm. and at no point of time the reader or the audience is confused that who is telling the story or how can sanjay also tell it if vedivyasa also told it or uh, vashampayan also told it it is everyone is telling there is uh, that beautiful scene where uh, uh, vashampayan is there uh, nemisharanya and the sages are sitting uh, and they are asking what happened o oh, great sage what happened in the uh, yagna of uh, janmeja and then the mahabharat is also told while the uh, uh, yagna is going on oh, yes so while they take breaks the story is also told there but then it is also told there where namish in namisharan when the sages come once again to vedvasa and vashampayan and then they also take place when vashampayan and vedvasa go to the uh, go to king janmeja after the uh, yagna has concluded so three timelines are going on at the same time and nobody uh, frets it nobody is uh, worried about what about chronology what about time oh what a mess what uh, vedvasa did not have a sense of chronology like a western critic would say this that Ved- vedvasa did not have a sense of chronology that he became confused while writing such a big epic and over the point of time he forgot that uh, who was telling the story or sometimes sanjay would tell it or sometime uh, sometime others would tell so my take is that uh, our civilization had a different uh, uh, sense of time and we should uh, keep that in mind while reviewing or critiquing art art oh, this is fascinating so can the sense of beautiful can it be cultivated can people be trained in it <laughs> or or is it is it something that is just there uh it can be cultivated if you already have it hmm. it can be nourished if you already have it but if it is missing hmm. it cannot be born hmm. then then you have to take another life <laughs> <laughs> you be born again <laughs> actually uh, uh, in uh, you say hindu a hindu sees life in man, many life perspectives so it is not uh, he doesn't care about uh, that wh- whether to achieve this in one life so he thinks about life always a very traditional hindu always thinks about life in many life yeah. so you can uh, you can cultivate it you can nourish it to greater uh, of course we have the concept of uh, uh uh cultivated uh, pleasure hmm. so just like uh, eating something is not a cultivated pleasure hmm. or the most uh, physical pleasures are not cultivated pleasures because you can uh, just go and have them hmm. but like uh, listening to good music shakti hmm. music is a cultivated pleasure you cannot just go on and start listening and you say wah wah so you, you have to actually learn what shakti music is Hmm. that is why you have to actually learn what an what a hindu painting actually means or hmm. what uh, certain weapons in the hands of the deities what do they signify only then you will be able to enjoy it enjoy. this is called cultivated art so there is a lot of stress on education in uh, india and in indic thought but it's not universal hmm. not everyone can be taught about it hmm. not everyone can be taught about the same thing hmm. uh, the most basic thing about indian civilization is that we are built on i just today wrote about it mm. we are built on multiple values mm. uh, we do not we have never pursued a single universal value we do not believe in universal value system mm. all the trouble in the west is that they have away again and again they fall upon universal values mm. so at first it was christian then it was uh, the enlightenment humanist 
right now it is new liberal so in any case any other point of view is not interesting hmm. so we we do not believe in this so we cultivate uh, you can say skills and crafts according hmm. to uh, their inclination aptitudes and we have to differentiate here, here between art and craft hmm. craft almost uh, in this i will use the uh, word almost but almost everyone can learn hmm. if they devote sufficient hours Hmm. and so uh, with shraddha and with hard work if they go on about it they will manage to uh, learn um, it reasonably well hmm. uh, which is required for the purpose but art cannot be uh, uh, you can say taught or learned it has to be innate hmm. and right now the tragedy of modern uh, education is that in universities they are all the time teaching arts but not crafts yeah i was actually so, so, going to come so, to that question Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I just wanted to know how how is education linked to aesthetics, and how do you? Uh, I mean, you can complete that point, but just to yeah. sort of the the context of it is how do you see the new education policy um, in this context, and also um, what constitutes a good format for education then? Yes. So uh, um, just to complete it, uh, now neuroscience has actually come up with. Uh, uh, just to complete my earlier point hmm. neuroscience has actually come up vs ramachandra mentions this in his seminal work phantoms in the brain hmm. uh, there are actually some neurons in the brain which fire when you see something beautiful hmm. so if if uh, now we can test that if looking upon a painting if those neurons don't fire then it's actually not beautiful it yeah. is just hogwash created by the art <laughs> galleries to <laughs> uh, to just uh, uh, fool you so yeah. there are some universal standards now scientific standards where you can say what is beautiful and what is not mm. but uh, as we discuss all throughout the talk that uh, the point of indian art is not just to create beauty but to transcend it about education uh, you said that uh, the first thing about education is that uh, in indic context that it cannot be universal mm. a problem comes when you make it when you try to make it universal Hmm. not everyone can be taught this is a fashion fad hmm. that we are all our political leaders just to get votes uh, just because it has become fashionable all political parties they keep following this that uh, in madhya pradesh from where i come from my state there is a very popular cartoon where uh, uh, a boy and a girl are flying on a pencil hmm. and the slogan is sab padhe sab badhe so uh, sab nahi pad sakte because sabko padhna nahi hai unki ichcha hi nahi hai they do not want to do it hmm. this is the this is, uh, it sounds absurd to a uh, hindu ear why hmm. because it sounds like uh, agar koi ye keh de uh, uh, you are saying this about education that sab padhe sab badhe hmm. suppose somebody says that some gym jaye aur some muscle banaye to hamara kya hoga matlab if you make it compulsory for everyone to go to the gym <laughs> and to do exercise to whatever they do it six pack or eight pack 12 pack so usme agar wo sabke upar thok diya jaye to wouldn't it be absurd hmm. so this idea about universal education is actually equally absurd so the first thing is uh, aesthetic and uh, education can be linked but it cannot be universal hmm. it has to be it is this is very very important it has to be voluntary hmm. if the student does not want to learn there is no way you can teach hmm. so uh, it has to be voluntary because the only authority that the teacher has on a student hmm. is morals hmm. and the moment you charge a fee hmm. that authority disappears hmm. and the student becomes the customer hmm. and the teacher is not even the seller hmm. he is the servant of the seller hmm. because he is not the owner of the university he is not the owner of the college Hmm. he is the servant of the seller hmm. and in this uh, setup in private colleges and universities especially you cannot fail the students but because obviously why would anyone <laughs> pay lakhs of fee to get uh, their uh, kids admitted to a um, uh, uh, private college just to get uh, them failed they will never so they pass 100% of the students maybe some backs in a few semesters hmm. uh, in a few years but then they pass 100% of the students so the second authority of discipline also disappears because hmm. he does not hear you at all because if he does not want to learn then he doesn't respect you hmm. if he has no fear of getting failed then he uh, doesn't fear you and you remove these two things from education 
then what remains there you have just created a mob of 60 70 unruly students the only thing in their minds is food and sex and you are trying to impart them uh, all the esoteric concepts in science technology religion whatever you want to mm-hmm. and it is completely un- it is a depressing thing yeah. so if you want to bring aesthetics into education it cannot be it cannot be universal it has to be voluntary i have learned from great teachers none of them none of those i met inside university or college i have learned from my guru almost everything that i know i did not meet him in a university and uh, those uh, those people those friends who come to uh, me uh, uh, those young because now i am about to touch 40 so i can also say that uh, the new generation <laughs> which has come so uh, the kids of 16 17 years old when they come to me in search uh, what to read what book to read on this subject what book to read on christianity or uh, art or aesthetics so i guide them if they read they come again to me then they have some questions and and they learn so fast and this is because they actually want to learn but if you do not want to learn just like i said you cannot create the desire to learn uh, inside anyone if the desire is there uh, all the crafts can be learned it can be cultivated to any end but if the desire is not there it's a torture for the learner and the teacher to do it the teaching and learning will not happen about uh, nep 2020 i have not read the uh, document completely just uh, certain extent of it so it would not be uh, very good for me to comment upon it so uh, from that i'll excuse myself pankaj ji thank you so much this was really enriching and a uh, lot of takeaways uh, most importantly the fact that this movement from um uh, bhog to yog uh you see all the colors of life through art but the its ultimate goal is the pursuit of truth that ultimate truth thank you so much for your time it was a pleasure talking to you thank you thank you